Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. And it is me, Catalyst Deco with Catalyst Deco Designs, and I figured it out. So after this dried, um, I looked at it and I, I really don't like it. It's got a little bit too much, like it recedes too much into the background. I wanted it warmer, slightly warmer. So I think I'm going to add in tea rose instead. So it's going to be like the, the drop cloth and then hurricane gray tea rose and maybe a little bit of peony. I'm not entirely sure yet, but we'll just see how that looks. But anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. So, <clears throat> tea rose is going to be, oh, there we go, cool. Tea rose is going to be like my, like a color that is involved with this. And then, um, yeah, so let me just go ahead and open everything up. I'm going to put this aside for now because we're not entirely sure that we're going to use that, but we might. Let's put it actually back where it belongs. <laughs> All righty. So that's Hurricane Gray. T rose and drop cloth all by Dixie Belle. That's a, that's what we're gonna do for the moment. Um, I've done something similar to this before, and I, and I did use the Magnolia Garden Transfer, so I do know it works. Um, <clears throat> but the trick here is gonna be to do it to make it so that it's not pink, because I don't really want it to be pink, pink. I want it to be more um, like I want to take. I want it to be more like a pinkish beige. So we'll just have to see. We'll just see how, how it all turns out. But that's where we're at so far. And so I'm just going to do this. I'll do a little bit on here. And for these, I'm just using a, just basic uh, art brushes. Um, and then my color antique number six is the one I'm using for blending. These ones are great for jewelry boxes because you can get, you can cover a large area pretty quickly. But, um, and they get into the, the fine details really easily. So I use that a lot. Okay, yeah, 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 I'm gonna like this. Okay, this is gonna work. And then with the added gray, I think that's really gonna be pretty special. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so let's do that. Let's get that in there. And the first coat is always kind of, you know, you just, you just have to work on it. You just have to, Gonna do a little, see how it dries. Do a little bit more, see how it dries. And like I've I've said on other blending videos, the uh, first coat is always a hot mess, and that's okay. In fact, you kind of expect it to be like I see a lot of people online who are like, ah, oh, this is my first coat, and it looks like it looks so terrible. <clears throat> uh, but that's okay because the first coats always do. Um, okay, so yeah, that's real pink, but that's okay. That's not it's not a problem. We're we're gonna be okay. Okay, and then what, this was my gray one? Yeah, it was, okay. Let's stick some on there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I really like the way that Hurricane Gray blends with T-Rose. That looks really pretty. <laughs> yeah, and that's gonna, that's gonna dry really nicely as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, this is gonna be good. Yeah, this is, I'm really happy with this. This is gonna be really good. This is exactly like what I want. Okay. So we're basically making, like we're only gonna be using like a little tiny bit of the tea rose. It's mostly gonna be, yeah, but it warms, it warms up these two colors, like the manatee, uh, I'm sorry, the hurricane gray and drop cloth it warms them up in a way that's like really compelling okay cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 really pretty i'm just gonna have to be careful not to make it too similar to the one i already i already made um <clears throat> because the one i already made is t rose is also it's also t rose and drop cloth cloth based so But it's a totally different vibe, so maybe it'll be all right. I just don't want to... Little known fact, Tea Rose was actually the very first um, Dixie Belle paint that I ever bought. Okay, now we just need to get a blender in here to kind of blend this all together. So when, you're, when you are using a blender to assist with your blending, a blender, a blending, a blender, um, you only, I like to have it just a little tiny bit damp. 
because what it serves two purposes. It serves the purpose of blending and getting your brush strokes away, but it also serves the purpose of if you made it too wet to establish the blend that you wanted, um, it'll dry it and smooth it out for you. And then you just have to keep something on hand to, because you're gonna get a lot of pigment on there, a lot of color on there, and that's not necessarily what you want. So, because like right now, this has a lot of the darker colors on there, and I would not want that to blend it with. Okay, yeah, so that's basically like what I'm gonna do here. All right, let's check it out. Let's just blend this out, blend this out. Blend this out, cool, cool, blend that out, blend that out. Okay. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not that similar to my other one either. My other one is very pink. It's... Okay, just gonna let that dry. And let's go ahead and start on the drawer films. Yeah, and see, this is not perfect, but it's okay because especially with smaller boxes, one of the great things about it is I can do that and then now I can do the brushes or the, the drawers. And by the time I've got the drawers done, then um, the that part will be dry. Okay, so we'll do this properly for you. <laughs> we'll do this properly for the children here. Do, do, do. Okay, so... There, there, that's on camera. Okay, there's that. Mm -hmm. And there's that. Right, let me make sure that it's all the way down in there. Okay, cool. Do 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 do. Um, I don't really have a masking tape preference. I just use whatever is on hand. I have the the green frog tape. I have the blue. I have just regular old masking tape. I have everything. The only thing that you just want to be aware of is that, like, you if you have some a painted surface then you do want to use the lower tack, like the purple or the blue, because this, or the, not the blue, not the blue, I'm sorry, the purple or the green, because this, um, masking things off, it can take the paint off. If when it, not, when it's not fully cured, it can take it right off. Um, okay, so there's that. Cool, cool. And one thing I do, so, okay, you'll see how, like, here. See how it's, like, it's not fully all the way to there, but rather it stops here, like where the top of the drawer front stops. I just think that looks better um, because it, it, sometimes, when, like when I first started, I was like, well, do I paint the back of it? Do I do this? Like, what do I do? And I couldn't figure it out. And then I eventually did figure it out. And this was kind of the way. Although these drawers are kind of interesting. Like I may actually, <clears throat> I may actually not do that. I may actually just do around. We'll see. Um, because these drawers have a, a natural sort of stop, see? So, but I'm going to mask it off anyway, just in case, so that I don't have to, you know, sit here with wet drawers going, oh no, I didn't mask it off, and it's going to be a hot mess on video. And just make sure that when you're masking things like this, just make sure that you burnish down the tape. I use my finger, but um, you can use a lot of different things. Let me see. I have this, this little, this little kind of wedge thing here. It's, um... It's actually a mod, a mod Podge tool, but um, that works really well for burnishing tape down. And it's not, uh, it's rubber, so it's not going to mar anything up. Like if you did have a design underneath there and you were masking something off later, like as in the case of like buffalo checks or stripes or whatever, um, it helps so that when you're burnishing it down, like when I use my fingernail like this, sometimes the indentations for me doing that on the drawer. But, in the, but we're not doing that. We don't, you don't get that with this. So you can use a tool like that if you want. Um, I just got it as part of a kit when I for decoupaging, um, that, and I still have it. I love that tool. I think I use it for a lot of different stuff. Um, but I'm sure that they sell it separately as well. Um, or you could also use the sticks that come with transfers um, or a popsicle stick or something of that nature. Uh, those are also great tools for that. You don't have to get like a whole separate tool um, for this procedure. 
But that's something I use that Mod Podge tool for is, is transfers. Um, especially when I have to get it into like little details. Because I like the sticks that it comes with. It sticks are a perfect tool. Um, but the, the Mod Podge wedge thing, it is really designed to get in. Like, okay, so let me give you an example here. Okay. Yeah, can you see that? So it's kind of designed for this purpose. There you go. See, like for getting that nice and I don't know if you can tell, but it's like really, really flush. There, can you see that? Yeah, it's really, really flush. It's kind of designed for that. And um, that's what I like about that as opposed to the sticks. So when, I, so I use this for putting transfers on because sometimes you need to like make the, you know, like in a little, in a little area, like these little, these little indentations here. Can you see that? Those little indentations. This will help and it won't rip the transfer. So when I, so I'm gonna do uh, them out, out to begin with, uh, but we'll probably do a finessed version of the blend with the drawers in. So when I, I do it, I always lay down my mid color, my mid color first. And I kind of block out where I want it to go, the, uh, the area that I want it to cover. And then I bring in either my light, my light or my dark color. Let's bring in the dark color. Okay. And I'm using a lot of paint right now. That's a, that's actually a little bit too much. You don't need that much. Um, like you definitely don't need that much. I'm not sure why I did that. I put that much on there. I just wasn't really thinking about it. It's okay though. It'll work. We'll make it work. So I might just do this. I might just very carefully kind of do this. <laughs> so, looking at this transfer, this transfer, like, one thing that I like to talk about a lot is knowing where your light sources are. Um, so I'm looking at this transfer right now, and it looks like that the light sources are kind of a little bit high and to the left, like just based on some of the highlights in the flowers, um, or high into the right. Yeah, high into the right. So if here, look, you see this one right here, you see how there's like the light source is kind of coming in from right here. So I'm going to keep that in mind while I am painting because you want to match your light source to the to the source of like if you're using a transfer or something like that you don't you want the light source of your shadows and your dimension that you're adding to your piece you want it to match like you want everything to match that's a pro tip for getting making sure that you have something um oh gosh that's way too much as well what am i doing <laughs> Oh, and I have the hardware taped off um, because I'm not changing out the, I'm not relining this one. I'm just going to clean up the lining really, really well. It's, it's perfect. It was just, it just needs to be cleaned. So um, I did, I gave it a once over already, but like, I'm just going to clean it up really well. Uh, so this, this hardware, okay. Um, it, it it was it was not really like coming off on its own. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, um. So I just taped it off, and that's definitely one way of handling it. Um. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. I prefer to take all the hardware off. Um, and I might regret that later, but this is just something that I decided to try for this piece because. Okay. And I'm not, I may have mentioned this in other series. Um, oh, m many, many people who do chalk paint, they are really, really concerned with minimizing brush strokes. And I, I, I do like to do that. I mean, 
sometimes it depends on the piece but um i think that if something is painted brush strokes are not a problem i mean this may come from the fact that i come to this from the fine art world where brush strokes are part of it like when you when you look at a painting in a museum for example um, one thing that people, you know, that, that separates different art styles apart and things like that. And one thing that um, pretty much any docent or art student or artist or art tour will talk about is like the brush strokes and the brushwork. Um, brushwork is the hallmark of different styles. Like, for example, Impressionism, um, Monet, like water lilies and things like that. that the whole thing is brushstrokes. That's like the whole point of it. And it's using brushstrokes to create this, you know, um, this illusion, this sort of like through, through a, a rainy window version of the worlds. And that's, and it's all part of it. Like these dabbed on brushstrokes and things like that are like, or like Van Gogh or, um, or like Van Gogh or like, uh, you know, just anybody. And it's a hallmark of like the different art styles. So Impressionism, we talked about a little bit. Um, expressionism, which is sort of a version of Impressionism, but it's more expressive. Like um, the brushstrokes convey emotion, emotion more uh, than they do like see a scene, like Impressionism. It's like the impression of a scene and then expressionism it's like the expression of emotions in a scene i mean that's not really like the art school definition of those terms it's sort of my definition of those terms uh but yeah brushstrokes but anyway the point of this is i didn't really want to get into like a whole art history lesson here but what i did want to do is say that because i come from that world where brush brushstrokes are part of it like brushstrokes are part of art the paintings that are on a wall frescoes, etc. It's part of it. Um, and so a lot of people want to minimize them in the furniture flipping community, but I kind of don't. I kind of want to use them to make use of them. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're just using our blender to blend out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to leave, we're going to leave this alone and let it dry. I'm not loving this this right now because it's there it's not exactly what i want but so i'm not gonna I'm, i think i'm gonna do the drawers inside like i always do them for a blend because i'm not loving like how this is turning out just now so um and part of it is because i just these drawers are so thin so let's just make sure yes that is dry okay so let's fold it over <laughs> okay and then um i have not these drawers are all the same, so I haven't really chosen which one goes where yet. Um, thankfully, they are, well, I hope they're all the same. I'm just gonna make sure that there are no gaps. Sometimes when I take a piece apart, I will open it up and, um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. And I'll just label the box of the drawers, one, two, three. Uh, that helps me keep track, especially because some older pieces of furniture, this is not so much the case with jewelry boxes, but some older pieces of furniture, um, like you you can't, it doesn't go back together <laughs> unless you, um, unless you put it exactly in the right order. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's even. All right, good. Okay, good. Okay, so yeah. All right, so when we take this out, I'm gonna put them in order, and then I will mark them before I put it. I'll do that. But yeah, that's a quick little tip, and I do like to do that. I think it's important to uh, know where you're, what, especially if you are doing, if are flipping like vintage, um, vintage or antique furniture, because that is really, really, the drawers are really finicky, especially like handmade things. Sometimes the, um, you know, the, the maker, 
will have not measured, <laughs> um, which is fine. You know, he doesn't need to measure. They don't need to measure. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Alright, so I'm probably going to have to speed up parts of this video because it's already getting kind of long and we're not even halfway done. So, I'll probably speed I'll probably, when I edit it, I'll probably speed up some of the boring parts of the parts where I just said, uh, yeah. <laughs> and just do little cuts and whatnot. Uh, so right now I am marking off the edge here of this. I am probably not going to mark off each aspect of it. I'm just going to probably just be careful. Um, but what I'm doing is here. Can you see that? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, is so I'm marking off the edges. <clears throat> just this edge so I can get a nice, clean, crisp edge. And then we're going to use our tool to get that all the way into the corner and burnish it down. Let's get back to it. <laughs> so we're going in here with the Hurricane Gray. <laughs> and you'll notice, see how I'm coming from this direction? Like, I'm coming from the tape outwards. This is a, this is a way to help ensure if, if you're leaving raw wood and you don't want to, like, you don't want to have to fix it later. Um, burnishing it down and then going this way will help prevent bleed, bleed through underneath the tape. Um, that's a very quick and easy trick. There's a lot of other things you can do, uh, especially if your piece is already painted. Like the, one of the easiest things to do, let's say I wanted to do um, like gray stripes and or like a gray background and pink stripes on this one. Ooh, I could do a gray back. Ooh, ooh, because there is stripes. Look, see stripes. Ooh, I could. Mmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that's fascinating. We might do that. <laughs> we might do something like that. Um, but let's say I wanted to do that. So it's. Uh, so I would paint the. I would paint the. I would actually paint the pink first since it's lighter. And then um, wait for it to fully dry, like all night. Like definitely, so that it's fully dry, like maybe a full-on 24 hours. Um, so that it's absolutely fully, fully dry. And then go in with my tank. And you paint a quick, quick, like super quick, non-thinned, like you can't use water for this process, uh, coat of the, the pink, and then just on the edges to kind of seal down the stencil or the tape. And then you put your ground over that. And it looks great. It works perfectly. So we might do that actually because <laughs> are we going to do that? Because if we did that, where would we put that? So, um, if we did that, that would probably look the best on the sides. I don't know. I do stripes a lot, though. Um, you know what? Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see this, if you'd like to see striping techniques, more striping techniques. Uh, because I could do that. I totally could. Hmm. Yeah, I totally could. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Yeah, but they'd be blended stripes anyway, so I can still paint this. Okay. I was just get I was getting a little bit up in my head about it because I was like, well, if I am going to do that, then I want to paint this pink. But um, if I did do that, it would probably be a blend from one way to the other, and I'll show you a way of doing that as well. I did do that in my Bohemian Jewelry Armor, but I will go over it in greater detail in this one because I kind of just glossed over it in the Bohemian Jewelry Armor. Um, I kind of just glossed over it. So I do want the base of this to be more gray, I think. I don't know. Part of it is that I don't want there to be draw cloth up here because the, and it's like, yeah, 
I, I like the contrast. Like, I like bright white, um, bright ivory. This liner, which is like, a, it's like a very, very bright, shiny, bright ivory. Um, I really like it, but it's, and it's not the same color as Drop Off. Like, you'll, you'll very much notice the difference. Um, it's similar, but it's much more, like, whereas Drop Cloth is more, um, more of a, I don't even know, like, it's, it's almost, it's almost like a soft beigey white, soft, like, yellowy white, um, it's got a lot of yellow tones in it, but this has more, this is more like of a, a bright, crisp white, and I just think it, I just don't think it would look, it would look great, drop off right next to it, um, I don't think it would look great with this gray right next to it, actually. So, maybe we'll do that. Okay. Maybe we'll see. Is there anything on the front? Yeah, there is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, these art brushes aren't wonderful for first coats, um, but they're helping with getting inside the little details. I prefer a large... I prefer to use the largest brush possible um, for the, the, the job. So... And it's not just because of coverage issues and brush stroke issues. Like, it's it's also just <laughs> for speed, honestly. Like, it coats faster um, that way. And you see how, like, every time I... Like, okay, so, like, I was, I was talking earlier about painterly brush strokes. That's not necessarily something that, um, like, I don't want... Brush strokes that aren't deliberate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do like stripes. I do stripes a lot, though. Let's not do stripes. Let's not do stripes. I've decided not to do stripes. Okay. <laughs> I've decided not to. Oh, great. Really. I've decided not to do stripes. Because I do stripes all the time. And I, I just, I want to do something... It's not like what I do all the time. So I put, um, so for this part of the blend, I put the the dark color first. That's not, like I said, that's usually not what I do. Like normally I put the mid-tone first. Um, but I was continuing on from the edge blend that I had done from the bottom. So that's something. It's really, it, there are lots of, there are lots of different techniques and tricks and tips. But honestly, I just paint. Um, I sometimes come up with a plan beforehand, and I sometimes don't. This one, I'm coming up with a plan as I go. When I was doing prep for this, I, I, I thought about making a scene back here. And so I, I should probably, before I get like too serious about this, this is another thing to keep in mind when you're doing the first coat of anything. Like, before you get too serious... with it. Um, kind of make your plan so that, because remember, it is a first coat, so we can blend it and blend it and blend it for hours and hours and hours and get it perfect, and we're still going to need to do another coat. And that's something that um, first-time blenders, I, when I, or at least, let me put it this way. When I first started doing blending on furniture, I was like, Working it and working it and working it and working it, trying to get it like perfect and trying to get it like, trying to get it to look like perfect for every coat. And then I'd go over, I'd realize it needed another coat and I'd be like, oh, I can't believe I did all that work and it, it's just going to, you know, I'm just going to be painting over it with another coat. So um, the more you do this, the more you realize that like the first coat, it matters because it's important for, for laying down um, you know, your kind of general ideas. And also because, you know, without a first coat, the second coat wouldn't uh, have anything to go over. But it doesn't have to be beautiful. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's better if it's not, just for your own, you know, sanity. Because you can sit there and, and I, I hear a lot of people, furniture flippers, talk a lot about how they spend so much time on pieces. And I get that. I do. I spend a lot of time on pieces myself. Um, but, 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 oh no, this is the gray, is this the, okay, this is the pink. Um, but I think that people, I, I think that one thing 
that newer furniture painters. Born, at least this is the shop that I ran into. I was treating it like painting a painting. And when you paint a painting on a canvas, you can, you know, it's, it's a different process. Like you're painting a scene or, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to paint. Um, I did surrealism and uh, like weird random things. Um, but so you're painting uh, on the paint on your painting and you want, you can just continue painting and painting and painting and you just keep building layers and, and doing um, under painting and over painting and you know, these layered techniques. Um, and I kind of thought that painting furniture would be like that, but actually it's very different. Uh, you want to paint a coat, let it dry, take a look at it, do the next. Paint a coat, let it dry, trust the process. I, so if this all sounds like repetition, um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure like how I'm going to structure the more tutorial based aspects of things. Like right now, all these videos are just me learning how to make videos. And then later, once I feel like I know how to make videos, I'm going to take some of my background in fine art and graphic design and make videos that are things that I haven't seen a video on or that I think that my knowledge adds a different, a, a different take on. Um, but for now, we're just doing these things and I'm calling them kind of like, playfully, I'm calling them Let's Paints because of, um, I don't know if any of you are video game players, but I am. And I do watch a lot of YouTube videos about um, gameplay about like, that are like, let's, and they call them let's plays. So I'm doing these, these initial ones just in the style, in the format of let's plays to get myself used to, used to the process. <clears throat> Figure out what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, what my setup needs to be. Like, this is obviously not going to be my setup forever. I'm actually working on it. It's going to be behind me. Um, it's one of the things I've been working on in the background is the, the setup where I sit there and I talk to you with my face on the camera and a project in front of me. Um, and I teach you something. Uh, so I will definitely cover fine art techniques that can be used, you know, from my fine art background, I'll definitely cover some techniques that I use. I have a whole series planned also called Artistically Scientific, which is where I'm going to cover like why things work the way they do. So <clears throat> one of the top major like series of questions that I see in groups and forums and things of that nature regarding furniture painting is, can you put X over Y? So let's say X is wax and Y is polyacrylic and Y. You know, you, well, actually, nobody really asked why, but I, what I wanted to do is make a series called Artistically Scientific where I cover Y. Yeah, I kind of like that. So it's got that kind of vibe. So this is, yeah, because it's warmer now. I like that. I like that. It is warmer now. Let me add in a little bit of the um, drop cloth. Anyway, so like I was saying, I, the Artistically Scientific series is going to cover kind of why your tools work the way they do and why things, oh, that's too much. That's way too much. Ugh. This is why we're doing these Let's Paints because I, I know myself, like I'm, I can't really talk and do things at the same time. I know why make videos, but the other videos are going to be like scripted. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> well, the artistically scientific uh, videos are going to be scripted. I'm not sure if all my tutorial videos are going to be scripted, but uh, the artistically scientific videos are going to be scripted. Um, so they'll cover like why things work. So why, why doesn't oil mix with water? So, but artistically scientific is like the, the science behind our supplies. A lot of people who first get started with crafting, they, they think, okay, cool. 
I love this. This is great for my mental state, but I don't know how anything works. <laughs> Um, I, I've never taken an art class. I don't have a creative bone in my body. I don't know how any of this works. And so these, the artistically scientific is, is going to be like how, how, why it works. Why art materials work the way they do. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave this video for now. I might, uh, come back when I have like the rest of the first coat done, just so I can show you kind of what I decided on. But yeah. I hope that, that you've learned something from this. I hope that my random ramblings, that you got something out of them. And let me know in the comments below if you did or you didn't. Otherwise, um, have a great, wonderful day, evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. And please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and uh, pick, click that little ringy-dingy-ding to be notified whenever I upload. Have, have a great one. Bye.